Well, good evening, Grace Church family. Let's stand up. We're going to worship together tonight.
can stand on the rock Rain came when blue but my house was built on me I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through Let's declare it through and we saw you tonight we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen welcome to church everybody why don't you greet somebody next to you and let's have a great night having the choir here. Let's give them a hand again. They just, they bring such a boost. I was just telling the team back there, I love it when we just have a stage full of worshipers. Well, good evening. Come on, somebody. Good evening. It's good to see you. Glad that you're in church tonight. It's a good place to be on a Saturday night. If you will, real quick, pull out your bulletin. I want to just highlight a couple things in here. It's all good, but I want to Really focus on our Sunday school as you take a look at just the various things happening. If you're new around here, we welcome you. You're always welcome to come be a part of our, our services on the weekend. We have groups, classes, outreach. We have so many things happening. Make sure you check out the bulletin on our website. Uh, it's an easy way just to get plugged in. It's one of the, the blessings of having a, a bigger church. We have so many ministries and ways to plug in and get connected in a big church, yet have very, very small, intimate community. So it's real important to do that. If you're new around here, there is a, a Connect card right here in front of you in the seats or up in the balcony or online if you're viewing with us. You can see the number that you can text there and interact with us. We'd love to answer any questions that you may have about church, about Jesus, why we do the things we do. It's always important to know the why behind the what. Maybe you have questions about Jesus. We'd love to interact with you about Him as well. And why we sing songs to him and pray to him and trust him for the forgiveness of our sins. If you have a, a prayer request as well, just going through a hard time, put that on there. Our team would love to reach out 
to you and pray over you if you'd like us to do that. You know, I say this every weekend, but I, it, it's, it's really real. Our team looks over these prayer requests, and I mean, we pray for them by name every single week. And we'll reach out and pray for you as well if you'd like us to, to reach out to you. So make sure you do that. And on your way out, you can drop that card at any of the, the offering boxes or the information desks. And that's where we do our tithes and offerings as well. And then real quick, just on the bulletin at the bottom on the page where it has all the various things that we are doing, our, our Sunday school. We started Sunday school this last summer. And on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., I know the, the Saturday night crowd's like, oh, man, I'm here, but what about me? And there's a couple things. Number one... Come back for Sunday school on Sunday morning. We've got the atrium open in the cafe, or we're recording all of them. All of the teachings are recorded. You can get on our website. The notes are downloaded. You know, we started Sunday school at the 9 a.m. because we, we really want to be a church that knows the Bible. We take some books and we go verse by verse. Some we take themes, and we really tackle that theme as it relates to the, all of what the Bible says about that topic. So take us up on the, the resource of our Sunday school and it's for all ages. We have kids, youth, and various adult classes. And I've, I've been super impressed with how uh, strong it is. It's, it's a really, really good resource to help us be equipped. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, again, I just thank you for the freedom to assemble and worship and praise and open the Bible and commit to it. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless us as we are a grateful we, we, we will do our part. We'll continue to give extravagantly of our time, money, and resources that the name of Jesus would grow in fame here in our city. It's in his name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Yeah, it's been a good week around here. We, as a staff, got to uh, pray over three of our, yeah, our yeah. new team that, and then saw them and had an ordination service. Yeah. We ordained them, laid ordained hands them on them, called them forth into just, the ministry. Wow. I mean, we all walked fantastic. away from here th Thursday just buzzed. Uh, all right, I'm going to talk to just a minute about Martin Luther King. Every year on the third Monday of January, we celebrate his life and work. And uh, if he hadn't been assassinated in 1968 at 39 years of age, he'd be 94 this weekend or this year. And uh, I read the threat of death hung over him for more than a dozen years during the Montgomery boys, uh, bus boycott back in 1955. He got 30 to 40 death threats every single day. Can you imagine that? I just, <sighs> King said, I almost broke down under the continual battering. I got to the point that I couldn't take it any longer. I was weak in the thick of this persecution. Fear overwhelmed him. One night he thought he was you know, he thought of the danger that his wife and two-year-old daughter were living under, and he gets out of bed, he goes to the kitchen, made a cup of coffee, sat down at his kitchen table, and he prayed, Lord, I'm down here trying to do what's right. Now I'm afraid. I'm losing my courage. I'm at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. And Martin said he experienced God in that moment like he had never experienced him before. An inner voice said, King, stand up for justice. And he knew right then that God would be with him till the end, and he was ready to face anything. In fact, three days later, his house was bombed, and no one was hurt. As a pastor, he often described that kitchen table prayer as one of the most revelatory spiritual experiences of his life. I mean, it was the turning point in his rise as a leader of the civil rights movement that literally changed our nation. I mean, it has been so discouraging to watch what this man lived and died for, being replaced by this new version of racism called critical race theory that judges people by the content of their skin melanin rather than the content of their character. And right now, just pointing that out can get you banned from the internet. I mean, that's how prevalent this is. The civil rights movement, you need to hear this, won, they won. I mean, it changed the nation big time. I lived in the South. I watched this massive shift that took place down there. The racial tension that we are experiencing right now has been artificially recreated by Marxist educators bent on destroying our American Republic. That's plain and simple. That's what's going on. The good news, here's the good news. We can access the same courage right now that Martin Luther King did 
in fighting back. In Isaiah chapter 30, this is what God says. He says in verse 18, therefore the Lord, this is one of our favorite passages here. I mean, we can never hear this enough. The Lord waits to be gracious to you. He will surely, I'm cutting to verse 19. He will surely be gracious to you, what? At the sound of your cry. Read it with me. When he hears it, he answers you. Man, oh man. I mean, if there is any verse in the Bible we need to memorize, it's that one. God is way more interested in our relationship than our comfort. <laughs> That's just a powerful statement. I mean, I take all night to unpack it. He's inviting us to engage with him in conversation. He's saying, I am not going to move into this if you're not gonna talk to me. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, the stories of Rob and Mel and Michelle, rather, McCoy last week, Man, that encouraged us. How many of you enjoyed Rob McCoy last <laughs> week? I, we have heard so many good things. I mean, these guys, they were taken to, uh, we heard the stories around the kitchen table, too. Yeah, we were hoping, man, last Saturday night, we should have got more I out know, of him is what we I were know. thinking. Well, literally, Sunday afternoon, we're sitting there, and I'm, think, I'm saying to you, we've got to get him back just to tell this. They, they went to the mat. I mean, they're, they were taken to court, threatened or their, uh, to have their uh, houses taken away, their church taken away. I mean, it, it was all kind of stuff. Threatened with jail. He was gonna go to jail because of, of having church. And, and, and they had put precautions in place. They were, they were actually submitting to many of the precautions, but he said they drew a line when the strip clubs were essential down the road and churches were still not essential. The, he said they drew the their line. Their church just said, no, we're not doing it. And uh, so, so, I mean, in one sense, we've been blessed here by not, it wasn't that extreme. In another sense, I think we were cursed by the fact that it wasn't that extreme because it, we, we didn't understand what was taking place. We didn't see, that'd, and, and that'd we, be a lot to unpack too. And we too, thought yeah. many people that we heard of these stories, we, we bought into the narrative, a lot of us, that man, they're just, they're, they're, they're being rude. They got a mean spirit. They need to, to submit to some of these policies that are, you know, have the welfare, of the, the well-being of people in mind. And once you hear all of the story, it is absolutely wicked what happened there to a lot of yeah, these churches. absolutely. Now, having said that, I am so proud of you guys for not caving, for continuing to come to church these last couple of years. I mean, you have no idea what this has meant to me and our team. I mean... I know I haven't always been <laughs> measured and now I've approached what's happening and you know, sometimes I've processed what I'm feeling out loud, but it, it, you know, it was a confusing mess. We were caught in this thing of trying to figure it all out, but you guys didn't miss a step. I mean, seriously, you stayed faithful, you kept praying for us, you kept cheering us on, and, uh, and I, just, I, I just wanna stop and tell you how much that means to us. I mean. Because at the same time I was being an accused and berated, I was receiving so much encouragement from you guys. To those of you who stayed, as well as those of you who have joined us, man, from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna thank you for what you've done and just being no, here. No, that is worthy of applause. It has I been mean, an absolute seriously. blessing. You have no idea. I mean, I am honored to be a leader here. Our Christianity, I think, just got real. I think that's what happened. And you guys are not caving to the pressure. I have never been prouder of your fighting spirit in all this. Wes, uh, tell us, because this week is an example of that. We, we celebrated a year of civic engagement. Yeah, our civic engagement team on Thursday night got together because it's been a year since we formed this ministry, the summer of 21. We, the idea came out of nowhere, and in a matter of a few months, we put a team together and have over a couple of hundred people that are somewhat active, and then a, 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 you know, a handful of about, it's probably 70 or 80 that are really active. And the story, I, I told Ron I was leaving Thursday night to go home, and we just told stories. We told stories of, of how we are being, uh, how we're able to inform our church, how to be active, not just to call out the darkness, but to have an action plan. And how can we truly be salt and light in our area and, 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 and impact school boards and impact society and impact politics impact some of the decisions that are being made where we're all affected. And they were just going through reading all of the victories and the, the ground that we have gained. 
And I left so encouraged. I told Ron, I was like, man, if you ever want to get encouraged, just go to one of the civic engagement yeah. meetings and let them just bless you with how much we are doing as yeah, a church. Yeah, you encouraged me big time. Why don't you read this, what Jesus said about this whole thing? You want to read it off of mine? No, I, I got it you right got here. It? All right. So Matthew 24, this is where we kind of have these watch and pray moments. Matthew 24, 3 through 14, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, Jesus, the disciples came to him privately, saying, tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answer, answered them, see that no one leads you astray, or some versions say no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains or the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation or trouble and put you to death. You will be hated by all nations for the name of Jesus. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. And we are committed to keep hearing that as uncomfortable as it makes us. That's right. Because we're going in. I mean, we're, right now, it is obvious we are going into That's that, right. that, that time frame. So I want to key in on those words because lawlessness and wickedness will increase. Jesus said, the love of many will grow cold. This is us. I mean, the big question is right now is how do we keep it from happening here? I mean, it is so easy to be triggered. It's so easy to just be mean and mad right now. I mean, with the person you're married to. I mean, just ask Debbie. Just, just like, what in the world? No, it's not about you. It's about me. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm triggered. I'm... I'm angry. I mean, we've had multiple shootings, mayhem, right here in our area this past week. I mean, which is exactly what happens when you try to defund the police in our inner city and criminals aren't prosecuted and aren't put in jail. I mean, Paul talked about that in Romans 13. We spent an entire weekend going over that. And then there's all this stuff we're finding out from Twitter about the COVID lies, about the so-called vaccine that was supposed to stop all of this. We posted this story on our resources page, I mean, there's so much coming at me, I can't even begin to send it all out to you. Pfizer board member urged Twitter to censor posts on natural immunity. It's low COVID risk for kids. So I hope you caught that. Pfizer knew about natural immunity, deliberately used big, big tech to push an experimental gene therapy that was completely unnecessary. Now there's evidence that the vaccine is actually causing all these new variants, making people more susceptible to the disease than less. And I'm not making this up. I want you to read it for yourself. Wall Street Journal suggests vaccines may be fueling new variants. This is all up on our web webpage, all the articles. Not only that, but the side effects of this thing are causing heart attacks, strokes, cancer, infertility, stillbirths, and the numbers are staggering. Please take the time. To, to, to look at some of the faces of this catastrophe. When you see people, their faces, and see who we're talking about here, uh, I mean, it changes the ball game. Take, uh, you know, take the time to listen to some of the, the facts of what's happening. Listen to their stories on how the government's ignoring them. One of the young dads here, you guys know him, what's uh, uh, Cunningham? Ryan Cunningham and his wife Megan. Man, they were on the front lines. He, he was fighting the mask and vaccine uh, mandates in Illinois, but he got mandated early on by his job to take the vaccine before anything was known about it. This week, he tweeted this on, on Twitter. He said, I wish I was a COVID conspiracy theorist early on instead of getting vaccinated. I'm in heart failure. The conspiracy theorists are doing just fine. The reason I'm saying this stuff, you know, again, is to challenge you to investigate before you take another booster or you give anything to your children. Read The Body of Others by Naomi Wolf, one of the best books out there. 
or the myriad of articles and books by Bobby Kennedy, who is the head of the Children's Health Defense Network. This guy's been on it from the get-go. I mean, three years ago. His website is just loaded with the latest, like this one, independent advisor who evaluated Pfizer vaccine safety was former paid Pfizer consultant. No conflict of interest there, right? I mean, last week, Rob mentioned the uh, film Plandemic. That link's also on our website. At the very least, I mean, this is the word we've been trying to use, get curious, please. You know, just get curious about, this can't be right, I mean, because this is not over. All right, so, all right, calm down, Ron. So how do we stay out of fear? How do we keep our hearts steady when it's evident that we've been deceived by big tech, the media, and our own government? And how do we stay out of the I told you so, snarky, you know, judgmental crowd? How do we keep our love from growing cold? Because that's the question we're asking ourselves right now. And it's real simple. God lays it out in in scripture. It's called prayer. (laughs) And here at the start of this new year, I'm gonna take a couple weekends to, you know, lead up to this prayer sprint and talk about this subject. And then I promise I will finish Romans, all right? All right, so, so I wanna tell this story, if you wanna add anything to it. Back 13 years ago, I think it's 13, it could be th- 14 or 15 even, I, I'm not exactly sure what year this was, but I hear Mike Bickle give this message on the difference between your dream and your assignment that rocked my world. I mean, it, it changed me. He said people were always coming to Kansas City and to the prayer room there that's been going 24 seven for 20 years, 20 something years now, and they're always saying, oh, this is the fulfillment of your dream, because there were prophecies about this for decades that all came to pass with just exceptional clarity. It was like, it's, it's almost scary how it all came to pass. And Mike would always say, when people would say that to him, this is not my dream. This is not my dream. There's only one thing worthy of my life goal, it's to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's my dream. This is my assignment. And you pastors, he, he looks into the, the, the video camera, and he said, and you pastors, you need to hear me say this. Your dream cannot be your ministry or you're gonna burn out. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like somebody stuck a knife in me and twisted it, because that was my problem. My heart had gotten all called up, tangled up in this place. Well, Mike gave us three things to do to get our hearts out of the ditch. I bet you can say them, can't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard I mean, this over and over and over, over, and, over and over again. Make a da- get a right view of God. Make a daily appointment. You have to make it sacrosanct. You've got to schedule it. You've got to schedule it. it, will, it, it it's not if I get around to it. Right. It's got to happen. And the other is a prayer list, yeah. which just sounded ridiculous to me. But he said, I'll even give you the prayer list out of scripture. And so I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty bold. So tell us, because this is, I think, the biggie right up front. What is the right view of God? Well, the biggest thing is is making sure that we don't have a wrong view of God, because if we have a wrong idea of who God is, it affects everything. If we think God is mostly mad, mostly sad, mostly disappointed, mostly cranky, that will absolutely affect the way that you talk I, to I'm him. not even, you know, how, oh, it's, I wanna ask this question. How many of you grew up with that picture of God? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. gosh. It was yeah, just, I, I, as a kid, I did. You know, that he was had, it. He had gray hair, you know, he had a wizard hat on with a staff, you know, waiting to thump me if I got out of line. Right. That mostly was my sad, view. too. Mostly, he'd oh, look at me and sigh. And disappointed. You're disappointed, just, yeah. I'm disappointed in you, Wes. Yeah, yeah. Do better. And then, you know, they teach you to pray. Go spend an hour talking to that guy. You're like, <laughs> that's the yeah, last kind of person I want to yeah, talk to. Yeah, he's mad at so me. So having a right view of God, which is the, the, when Jesus came, Jesus cemented this idea that God in heaven was your father, your papa, your Abba. It was a very, very uh, intimate term of endearment, uh, Abba. And he's mostly glad. He's not mostly sad. He's full of graciousness. He's full of mercy. He's full of kindness. You know, when you see the pictures of the children running into the lap of Jesus, 
they would run from the Pharisees, the religious people, but they would run to him. There's a reason, because they liked being around him. Yeah. They liked the way there that he go. made them feel. There so a right view of God is critical. Okay, all right, pray for us. And we'll... Here, let's stand, and then yeah. Here we and go. we're gonna pray and get into the scriptures. And, and this month, you know, Ron's gonna be calling us to this, this prayer sprint, the last week of January. You got a little uh, handout for it on your way in tonight. Man, lock in with us. Father, we come before you, and we ask you, God, as it's a new year, start to, just a, an opportunity to turn over a new leaf. God, we are asking you for grace on our lives to be a people that really pray and know how to pray and stay with it and not quit. God, help us, strengthen us, convict us, give us the grace to do it. And even as Ron teaches over these next couple weekends about how to, Lord, let it stick. Let it provoke us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Wes. Okay, I'm going to try to stay off of rabbit trails here because we got some ground to cover. Uh, let's start here in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now, I'm hoping you're starting the Bible reading plan with us this year. I know a bunch of you have been meaning to. This is the year to do it. I mean, we, I don't know how many years, decades I've been doing this or uh, years I've been doing this. This changes your life when you read the Bible through. And, and we're on a plan together, which is really cool because we get to talk about it you know, together. So find out about that. You, you can find it on our webpage. You can find it uh, back there in the back before you leave. Here's why I started with this verse. The moment we trust Jesus to save us from our sins, an epic change takes place inside of us that is even greater than what happened in the Garden of Eden. The Holy Spirit breathes life into our dead spirit and he infuses us with supernatural God life. Jesus called it being born again. In John 14, 16, he said, when I return to my Father, he will give you another helper who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. And he will be where? In you. He'll be your teacher, coach, trainer, guide, advocate, counselor, truth revealer, eye opener, heart mender, emotion stabilizer, the very best friend you'll ever have. Jesus punctuated it saying, you won't be able to do anything without it. Now I have two prayer lists for strengthening my inner man. We're gonna go through both of these over the next two weeks. They're both in our prayer book and online. Today I wanna run through the, the, the first, through the trust prayers that help me connect with the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 13, Paul says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now I want you to get that. He's saying that our friendship with the Holy Spirit is just as important as the grace of Jesus and the love of God. I mean, that's huge. In the Old Testament, God came close to his people in a place called the Holy of Holies. It's the innermost sanctuary of the Jewish temple. He'd appear as a ball of fire. They called it his Shekinah glory. A priest was allowed in once a year to atone for the sins of the people, but only after he'd gone through all kinds of ceremonial cleansing and they tied a rope to his foot in case he died and they could pull him out without going in and dying too. I mean, that's how serious this was. What's staggering is that same glory, that very same glory is in us. At Jesus' resurrection, God relocated the Holy of Holies to the recreated human spirit of every born-again believer. It's why he ripped the temple veil from the top to the bottom the day Jesus died that separated the Holy of Holies. He said, I'm not here anymore. I'm not doing it this way. I'm gonna live in you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, I, I'm sorry, I just get excited when I talk about this stuff. The Apostle Paul says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives where? <coughs> in you and was given to you by God. The day you were born again, you got a hardwired broadband connection with this Holy of Holies fireball. Eastern religions refer to the human spirit as the mysterious void within. As a believer, you got the mystery of the ages, Christ in you, the hope of glory, dwelling in your born again spirit. I mean, that's how Paul described him in Colossians 1, 26. 
If you've been born again, any time you dial down and peer into your innermost being, you're connecting with the real person. It's what Jesus meant when he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, Matthew 28, 20. We wanna understand how he communicates so we can, we can connect, so we can pick up on his subtle promptings and hear his still small voice because he's our guide to understanding all truth. Jesus said, you won't even be able to see the truth without his illumination. It's what David meant in Psalm 36, 9, when he said, in your light we see light. These prayers help us develop the verbal skills for addressing it, for doing that. Over the years, I've added some things to the list, like I'll, I'll say, Lord, I wanna see what you're doing. I wanna see your eyes. I wanna see your face. I wanna, I wanna hear what you're saying. I wanna know what you're thinking. I wanna feel your emotions. I wanna feel what you're feeling. The Holy Spirit loves that. I mean, he loves doing that. Maybe through a simple phrase that comes into your mind as you're waking up the next day or a dream where you suddenly realize, wow, God's speaking to me. I think the reason some of us never hear his voice is we're too noisy. We're, we were never quiet enough to hear him speak or we never ask. It's another big one. The Holy Spirit will not yell over the noise of my smartphone. He will not make me sit still and listen against my will. I own, this is embarrassing, I own four different devices that, that talk to me. This is really embarrassing when I realize how many I had. I have an Alexa, a Bigsby, a Google Home, and a HomePod. And two of them were gifts, so don't judge me too bad. I didn't, I didn't go out and buy all four. But here's the point, when they're plugged in, it means that just about any place in my house, I can ask a question about almost anything and get an immediate answer. But if I never use the code word or the phrase the, to, or phrase the question, I'm not even aware they exist. I don't even know they're there. I'll be struggling to find a spelling of a word or learn a fact about science or figure out what the weather's gonna be or wanna know the time or find a scripture and finally remember, oh yeah. Hey Siri, where does the Bible say the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth? Okay, I found this on the web. All right, you just gave me three different options. John 3, 16, 13, yeah. <laughs> Is that not crazy? I mean, he'll take me to it if I point and click right to the Bible verse. Jesus said those words, the Holy Spirit will do that. Well, the Holy Spirit is infinitely more knowledgeable than Siri. I mean, he loves to talk to me about anything, anytime. <clears throat> Sorry. But he waits for me to initiate the conversation. My favorite question back in the 70s was, okay, Holy Spirit, who am I supposed to marry? And one morning, he and I had a long conversation about Debbie. Because we had had, you know, this on again, off again relationship. And it wasn't her fault. I had commitment issues, let's just leave it there, all right? I, was, yeah, anyway, he actually, this is, this is one of the times in my life that I'll remember forever, he actually argued with me about how she was the most compatible potential marriage partner that I had ever dated. And uh, he even gave me a supernatural sign, I it could go into this, to confirm to me that she was the one and to get me moving. So, you know, it was so, and when I say one, she was, she was what I'd been asking him for. So it was so compelling, I asked her to marry me that night and she accepted. So please, please don't ask her to tell you how dorky and awkward that whole thing was because it is humiliating on my part. But you know, that was just, I was afraid. I was freaked out about the whole concept of marriage. But that's one of the handful of times that God has been that direct and forceful with me about something or someone. So another was when my dad was dying. He spoke to me about who was to replace him here on our leadership team. And that person's still here today. I mean, it was a, that was absolutely clear as a bell God thing. The Holy Spirit knows us inside and out. I mean, he knew who I needed in a wife way better than I did. I thought Debbie was beautiful. I just couldn't see how our lives and our calling were perfectly matched and how God had orchestrated the whole thing and he, 
He just was showing me that point by point that morning. I'm walking around, what about this girl? What about that girl I dated? What about her? And what about this? And what about that? And the Lord's going, nah, this is the one. Think about how she's this, and she said this, and you know this, and you're, she's related to your family, and they know this, and it's like, whoa, my goodness. In fact, I, I ended that conversation with, Lord, you really have answered my prayer, haven't you? I mean, this is amazing. I mean, God is interested. That's what just amazes me. He cares about every little detail in my life. I'll talk to him about my gadgets, you know, my, my finances, my house, my kids, my grandkids, my health. He knows what I enjoy. He'll talk to me about travel and how to resolve a conflict. When I was younger, he talked to me about my career path. Imagine having somebody who knows everything about everything, living inside you, wanting to talk, and you never say, hey, Holy Spirit, and activate the conversation. And just as a side note, if he ever does start the conversation, you're probably in trouble. <laughs> or he's warning you about danger ahead, you know, typically. When I initiate the conversation, I'll, I'll get maybe an impression, sometimes in a moment, sometimes it's later, or an idea will come to me that saves me all kinds of pain and sends me down a whole different path. We have the greatest counselor of all time living inside us, just waiting to unravel our confusion, but we have to dial down, we have to talk to him. It helps me to picture the Holy Spirit like that brilliant ball of burning light in the Holy of Holies. And again, it's, you know, this is very different than what New Age Eastern mysticism teaches about focusing within till our spirits are born again. There's no one within to talk to. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you've got to be born again to even see the kingdom of God. Paul takes it a step further in Galatians 5, 25, saying, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And I can tell you from personal experience, you'll never walk in the Spirit more than you talk to the Spirit. The two go hand in hand. If you want to live under the influence and the inspiration of the Spirit's leadership, you have to talk to him. That's why Proverbs 4.23 says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And one aspect of that is being diligent to keep our hearts connected. Jesus called him living water. We can actually feel the joy and favor of God when he's touching our soul. He's the most precious gift we ever receive. David said in Psalm 131 verse two, I've stilled and quieted my soul. I mean, we are generally revving at such a high velocity, it's little wonder we can hear his voice or sense his presence. It's the most frenetic culture to ever exist. We're in constant turmoil, fretting, texting, posting, emailing, checking Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and God's saying, you know, I really wanna talk to you. I have a lot more to say than the people you're talking to. I just have so much I wanna show you. I have new mercies waiting for you every morning, but I only wanna talk to you if you do. I want a relationship, so I'll wait to be gracious to you. That's starting to make more sense. Somehow David understood that. He's running a kingdom, handling the economy, commanding the army, talk about a demanding job, but he says, I turn it all off and quiet my soul to hear from you, God. And here's why, Psalm 27, one. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when evil men advance against me to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me? They will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident that this is where he got his courage. Verse four, w read it with me. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. By quieting his soul to enjoy God's presence, David could then say in verse five, I know in the day of trouble he will keep me safe. His assurance and answer to fear was his resolve to be a person of one thing, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life so he could gaze on God's beauty and ask questions. That's why he wanted to do it. He wanted to be in God's house, that was it. So he could behold the beauty of the Lord and, and inquire. That was the sanctuary David had from all the craziness. 
You can talk to the Holy Spirit anytime as you're going from one class or one meeting to the next. I'll ask, Holy Spirit, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? What are you doing? What do you want to tell me? <coughs> Sorry. I try to talk to him in a little 10, you know, 20, 30 second spurts. Other times I'll linger, just listening. I'll try to make it affectionate. Holy Spirit, I love your bright presence in it. You are the burning flame of the Father's love. I try to take my foot off the gas. And so Holy Spirit generally speaks in whispers. I'll try to speak softly, briefly, pause. Because it's conversation, it's two way. I, listen, I try to listen more than I speak. I've been using the trust prayers for more than a decade now. They're in a prayer book. This is a powerful, powerful tool, guys. You can download load it on our webpage. They're at our info tables. Each letter represents a word. T is thank you, R, release, revelation. You use me, S, strengthen me, T, teach me. And so I wanna just real quickly blast through these again, just get our minds you know, on this track. T, thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to live in me. I love your bright presence. You're the burning flame of the Father's love. Your presence renews my mind and transforms my heart. Thank you for never leaving me or forsaking me. I can't do anything without you. Now, this is love language. This is, you know, this is that gooey, you know, love language. When you're talking to your spouse, you don't know, Holy Spirit, thank you for coming to live in me. I love your bride presence. Really? No, you say it to him. You know, you're, you're not just regurgitating words. You're saying it from the heart. Jesus said, you know, God is seeking worship, but so worship in spirit and truth. So I'll generally go these, through these before I even get out of bed. And because I'm talking to God in my spirit, I'll close my eyes and I'll picture him as this ball of fiery light and power inside me. And if you're thinking, well, that doesn't help me so much, find something that does. I mean, I, I, I love you know, that picture, but there are so many others in Scripture describing the Holy Spirit, like fire, wind, light, oil, power. Uh, Jesus called him living water that would flow out of our innermost being. So find words that are meaningful to you, like maybe mighty wind of God, blow through my soul today. Let me soar in your presence like an eagle. Or well of living water, spring up in me. Fill my soul with your joy and your peace. Fire of God, burn in me a passion for Jesus. I mean, there's just so many ways. I'm acknowledging that he's in my spirit, but I want him to fill my mind, will, and emotions with his life. In the Psalms, David is constantly asking, God, touch my thirsty soul. God hadn't left him, but he recognized I need my soul to be under the influence. He's saying, thank you, Holy Spirit, for that we're, saying, we're saying this. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your bright presence, for your leadership today. I need you in every situation I'm gonna face. Jesus said, I can't do anything without you. I'm acknowledging that right now. Fill me. So, R, release revelation, Holy Spirit. You're the revealer of truth. The Bible says it's only in your light that I can see light. Shine your light into my darkness today and reveal God's heart and word to me. As I read and meditate on your truth, open the eyes of my understanding. Show me great and mighty things that I don't know. That's Jeremiah 33, three. I mean, he knows the deepest things in the Father's heart. So I ask him, show me more. You know so much, Holy Spirit. Show me more. Holy Spirit, I wanna know Jesus like you know Jesus. Let me feel what you feel about Jesus. Lead me into relationship with Jesus. <clears throat> There's another facet of this. For God's word to produce faith in our hearts, the Holy Spirit has to illumine it. I should have brought my elderberry cough syrup with me. <clears throat> By the way, that stuff actually works. Those of you that are dealing with this junk. All right. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the word of God, but without the Holy Spirit's revelation, the words, are, they're just words on a page. I can't really grasp it. So I'm asking him to open my spiritual eyes to see spiritual reality. It's what Jesus is talking about in John 8, 32, when he said, if you'll continue my words, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
Now get this, it's illumined truth that sets you free. Not just written words, not just memorized words. Does that make sense? Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, one day he, he says this to his followers in John 6, 63. He says, the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and they're life. You can't get them without the Holy Spirit's help. You can't understand them without his light. Later, he told them the Holy Spirit's gonna take these words and he's gonna reveal them to you. So we wanna constantly be asking for that. You ever had a Bible verse just come alive to you? Has that ever happened to anybody? I mean, just, whoa, what happened? I mean, it like came off the page. Suddenly you understood it. Well, that's what this is like. It's Paul's prayer for us in Ephesians 1.17. He said that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us to believe. I, you know, I used to read that. That sounds like Latin the first time you read it. Like, what? But as the Holy Spirit begins to shine light on it, those words get more and more exciting. Use me. Use me, Holy Spirit, help, to help others today. Let your gifts and your power flow through me. Make me a channel of your love, not just a reservoir. Speak through me today. Communicate your love to everyone I come in contact with. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. I believe every spiritual gift, now this is my, my belief, but I have seen this play out. Every spiritual gift is available to every one of us as we're endeavoring to do God's will. Even though certain gifts will operate through certain individuals more frequently because of the way God's wired them up and the way he's called them. But that means we wanna stay open to the fact that all things are possible. Case in point, I'll give you a crazy example. I was invited to preach at a convention many years ago to a large crowd of people in Milan, Italy. And I am still amazed. I mean, I, I need to tell a story more often because it was just so incredible. What God did was mind blowing. For, for the most part, these people were unchurched. And I mean really unchurched. And after I finished explaining the simple gospel to them, I felt emboldened to tell this crowd that if God didn't confirm the truth that I had just preached to them in some tangible way, they didn't have to believe me. And I was in a place where nobody knew me, so I thought, what do I have to lose, you know? These people don't pay my salary and I, they'll never see me again, so you know. <laughs> I said the words, I mean, I got them out there. And no sooner had the words gone out of my mouth then a, a woman on the front row tr started trying to hit me with her cane. And I mean, she was, she was going for it. I mean, she was banging on the thing and speaking in Italian. It sounded like yelling to me, you know, all kinds of ways. So come to find out, she was totally blind and God had opened her eyes at that moment. I mean, my friend Fred, who's interpreting for me, saw her many years after that. Every time he'd come over, he, uh, over here, he'd say, you know, she got her driver's license. She's completely healed. She's, she's telling everybody about this miracle that God did in her life. <laughs> Several other notable miracles. Same service. I mean, th this was one of those like, whoa, God is doing stuff. I'm hearing people, you know, one doctor took off the back brace that he was wearing because he was in intense pain and he'd been you know, through all this stuff and, and was healed. I mean, uh, just incredible stuff that happened. You know, so, so uh, it only happened that one time. <laughs> but I'm a firmer believer that anything is possible when God puts you in a circumstance like that and you make yourself available and step out and invite him to use you. He can, and sometimes we'll do amazing things. I came back and I thought, well, I'm now a healing evangelist. <laughs> Hasn't happened again. <laughs> so in this prayer, we're simply saying, the Holy Spirit, I'm available. Use me whenever, however you want. Maybe, let me give you a scenario that, that comes more down to earth, all right? Maybe ask a coworker how they're doing and probe a little, you know, how, you know, how are you feeling about what's going on in your life? And you know, it generally doesn't take much to get people to open up if you listen. And, uh, and then follow it up 
especially as the Holy Spirit prompts you in this, to say, you know, can I pray with you about this? I'm telling you, I've been reading stories of people who just did that simple thing, just open these possibilities. <laughs> One guy said at his work, he's got a, almost a line at work of people getting prayed for now, you know, routinely, because the miracles that are happening, the miracles that are happening. You know, if you wanna see miracles, ask the Holy Spirit to work through you, use you. I love the, this next one, strengthen me. Holy Spirit, rise up in me, strengthen my mind, will, and emotions with your love and power. Be strong in my weakness, bring glory to Jesus. Let your love and joy and peace flow through me today. I'll think about each one of those things as I'm thanking him, because my default is to self-focus. You know, I'm, it's all about me. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, thank you for empowering me to notice people, to notice others. Help me to love every person I come in contact with today. Let me see them through your eyes. Galatians 5.22, Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit, read it with me, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are virtues the Holy Spirit wants to grow and develop in my character. But since he's in me, I can legitimately thank him that it's already there. I'll say thank you for your peace that passes all my understanding. Rise up in my soul, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my emotions with that peace. Let your peace rule and guard my heart today. When I'm anxious, I try to remember to say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Your peace is ruling me. It's guarding me. When I get angry because somebody's attacking me, I, I try to stop and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for patience right now. You've been so patient with me. Sometimes I can just feel him cooling down my hot emotions. Now, I know this is hard, but he'll help you. He's, he'll be strong in your weakness if you'll just connect with him. <clears throat> and then finally, I'll say, teach me. Holy Spirit, you're the great teacher. Your wisdom and knowledge are unsearchable. You know the deepest things of the Father's heart. Teach me in every area of my life. Show me great and mighty things in your word. Help me to stay on the path that you've set for me to walk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Teach me your purposes for my life. I set my heart to receive your instruction and obey. And then get specific. Holy Spirit, tell me what, what you want me to do. Should I apply for this job? Teach me how to manage my money. I'm, I'm, I'm lost right now. Talk to me about my relationships. Should I go out with that person? Should I go, sh should I homeschool my kids right now? Is there, is there another option? Show me which way, way is best. You know everything about everything. I'm asking you to make right choices really clear to me right now. Now again, you might not get an immediate pressure, but it'll come maybe a, even a week or a month later. Sometime it'll come as you move out. I go by, you know, green, by red lights more than green lights. If I'm seeking to know God's will, he generally will give me a red light if I'm about to make a mistake or if I need to change directions. Now again, if I'm seeking, if I'm connecting with him, because I get done in by inertia if I start to try to hear voices and divine the will of God. I, you know, I think God has a lot of latitude for us in his perfect will. I, I try to move forward and stay sensitive because it's easier to drive a moving car than a park one. You know, I'm just saying, okay, God, I'm moving, but I'm really listening. I'm really leaning in for your direction here. I'll say, give me new ideas, order my steps, open new doors, new relationships, teach me how to live in ways that are pleasing to me, and show, pleasing to you, and show me how to best walk in your will and blessing, prosperity for my life. Remember in John 14, 26, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will teach you what? All things. He's not just talking about Bible truth. When those perplexing situations arise that leave you wondering what in the world am I gonna do, I'll direct those thoughts to the Holy Spirit and say, you know exactly what I should do. Show me, lead me, let the wind of your presence fill my sails, take me where I need to go today. I'm leaning into you, Holy Spirit. He's not out to hijack your life. He, want, he waits to be invited. I've, I found out the hard way. He, you know, he will completely back off and let go of the reins if I grab onto him. If you'll use the trust prayers, you're gonna start experiencing God in a way you never have. You're gonna... Fall in love with Jesus more than you thought possible. I love something John Thurlow said when he was here with us. 
about prayer. As a worship leader, this guy spent thousands of hours in the prayer room, and this was his big takeaway. He said, loving God takes time. That means even if your heart is a frozen lump of meat, eventually it'll melt if you put it in front of the bonfire of God's love. There'll be a tenderness in you that wasn't there. I mean, I watched it happen in my own cold heart. All right, so I'm gonna ask our worship team, guys, if you come out right now. I grew up in church singing a song, and this was really funny to me as I was looking through songs to sing here. There was only one song I could find that really is directed to the Holy Spirit. This is so, so interesting. I mean, all the songs that I grew up singing are about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit come down, but uh, uh, this one, well, I had, this one actually has come down too, but I changed the words, all right? So, so we're, <laughs> we're gonna sing it a little different. The song is Spirit of the Living God, the original way is Fall Afresh on Me. But in this context, in what we've been talking about, you clearly see this is scripture, right? I'm not making this up. This is scripture. He li- Where does the Holy Spirit live? In me. He lives, Jesus said, in my innermost being. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So that's the Holy Spirit he's talking about. So he's in me. So this is, I think this is legit. So we're seeing Spirit of the living God flow afresh through me. Makes more sense to me. I don't know. It's just, that's what I want him to do. I flow into my mind, into my will, into my emotions. Because that's how I'm transformed. <clears throat> that's how my mind is renewed. All right, so y'all know this song, Corey? Man, it's great having these two here tonight leading us in worship, wasn't it? Corey Voss and ah, Chiquita. Chiquita, Ch- I never can get it. Say it on the microphone so everybody. Chidea. Lord. And it, because it doesn't look like that when you spell it on, on paper. Anyway, these guys have been a part of our team for a while, so I just so appreciate it. All right, so lead us in that song. Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the Living God, flow afresh through me. Why don't you stand up and we'll sing it together. Spirit of the Living God, flow Think of him as that ball of fire inside of you. Lord, I want you to rise up and flow through.
Now, based on that song, and you know, I hadn't thought of a song for many years, and then when we were, when I was starting to teach on this, I thought, wow, you know, and those words just stick with me so easily. They just come to me, melt me, mold me. So what I went, I went with a, another couple of words. Help me hold me, instead of melt me, mold me. Help me hold me, fill me, use me. Now, let me tell you why I do that. Help me, because I can't do anything without you. So help me, help me, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me today. And you can, you can, you can add all that other stuff from the trust prayers into that. Hold me, because this is one of my weaknesses. I'm not very steady. I wobble a lot, you know. I'm up and I'm down and I'm around and, you know. So, so one of the prayers I really like to lock into with the Holy Spirit, keep me steady, keep me steady. Hold me, hold on to me, Lord. Don't let me go, don't let me squiggle out of your arms, Lord. Hold me, hold me, hold me close to you. Keep me safe, keep me out of sin and darkness and keep me out of fear and, you know, anxiety and all those other things. Hold me, hold on to me. Hold me close, hold me. Fill me, same thing we're praying, and use me. So you got all, you got four of them and you can kinda, you know, but help me, hold me, fill me, use me. Say that with me. Help me, hold me, fill me, use me. Say it again. Help me, hold me, fill me, use me. Say it again. Help me, hold me, fill me, use me. They say if you do it three times, you'll remember it. All right, now I add one more because I'm 71. Heal me. Because <laughs> there is always something wrong with me. <laughs> something always hurts. <laughs> so I, heal me, help me, hold me, fill me, use me. And that's five. Lord, we are just setting our hearts right here tonight. We're just setting our course for this year. We want to come out of this year knowing you better. We want to come out of this year more connected to you than we have been in the last three. We want to come out of this year with our hearts softer and not harder. As lawlessness increases, we don't want it to destroy our love for one another and for you. And so we're just asking you, Spirit, help us. Help us. Help us. When I back off of this, my, my heart becomes an ice cube so fast it makes my head spin. We are living in a toxic spiritual environment right now. You're going forward or backward. There's no middle ground. Now's the time to seek the Lord. This verse in Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me when? There you, some of you said it. When will you seek me and find me? When you search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you, says the Lord. Now, I know the devil loves to play games with me. Say, well, you're not... You're not seeking him with all your heart. Okay, here's how you get your heart into it. Jesus said, wherever you put your treasure, your heart follows. You know what your treasure is? Your worship, your love, your adoration, your prayer, your giving. So you just say, okay, God, I'm gonna put my heart out there. I'm gonna start praying this stuff. I'm gonna start reading your word. I'm gonna put you first, and I'm gonna trust my heart to follow. I'm gonna trust that you're gonna change my heart inside. All right, we're just gonna sing a shortened version of it one more time and this will be our dismissal. Let's do it. Spirit of the living God Flow afresh through oh, me Do it, Lord, we ask you to do it. See that part.
All right, let's see if we got it. Uh, just those, those four things. Help me, hold me, fill me, use me. All right, are you guys gonna do this? I hope you'll do it. You won't, you won't see any results if you don't. This year, just make this a daily appointment where you go through this list, all right? I'm gonna add some more things next week, but just this will transform you. All right, our prayer team's gonna come down. Any of you that have prayer needs, if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't been born again, that's where it all starts. Come down, let someone pray for you. You're gonna leave here tonight with the Holy Spirit, the ball of fire living inside of you. All right, God bless you all. Love you all. See you back here, all right?